The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Good. Nico? Great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 6648. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg. It's like 69 degrees and partly cloudy. Uh, looks like Michigan weather to me. And uh, I'd like you to, first of all, please pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder, over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients, all to make you healthy. And it's all powered by fulvic and humic acid. And these are the miracle molecules that tell the, uh, <clears throat> tell the cells to open up and let the good stuff in and take that bad stuff out of there. Also, please uh, pick up our, prime, or our uh, Health Signals newsletter. This is a new one, <clears throat> and you should really pick this up because there's 10 reasons why NAD should be on your radar, and this really goes to deep in what uh, Paige and I were talking about uh, last week, NAD the pre uh, and the precursor to NAD. And uh, it's a little confusing in some of these articles because in the second article here, they start talking about... Uh, NAD, why it's important, and they start talking about the precursors, and the precursor is NNM. Let's see, it's down here someplace with resveratrol. NNM is, uh, and I should uh, probably just show you this. This is where I get my stuff from. This is the NMN, the uh, Nico. Uh, Tideman mononucleotide, and this is a precursor to the NAD, which is pretty much proven now that this uh, helps you live longer. So why this is important is because this is the precursor, and you can't take NAD by itself, but you can take the precursor, which uh, just go goes and your body changes into NAD, and that's how it works. And you can get another supplement, which is, uh, let's see, I've got it here. Resveratrol. Yeah, resver transmits resveratrol. And what this does, this makes uh, the NMM more potent, maybe a 50, 100 times more potent. They really do work together. So it's a nice combination. This is what I've been using for quite a while. They have another product, which is the NADH, which adds another hydrogen mo molecule on it. And uh, that's taken with CoQ10. And because I take CoQ10 already in the primal edge, I don't need to take that. But these are the ones I wanted to take that. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. But, the, you know, read these articles. A little confusing because one of them states that uh, NR is, uh, is the precursor, and then it changes to NNM, and the other one says it the opposite way. And I've heard Dr. Sinclair say that uh, he takes the NMN, which is what I've been taking, and he says it is the precursor. So maybe a little confusion there, but, you know, I just put the stuff in here like uh, I see it, so uh, I don't add any commentary to it. But uh, check all these things out. It's uh, real helpful to understand why this should be on your radar and maybe why you should be taking this. <clears throat> and we're all seeking longevity. That's, uh, you know, we want to be healthy, especially in later in life, so you don't look like a cripple and you're not taking all these drugs. Uh, because that uh, it presents another problem. So let's go to this article here from the CDC. What they're talking about here is the CDC expert says antibiotic resistance is worse than we previously thought. And I think this is important because if you're constantly taking antibiotics, and a lot of people take these for the wrong reasons, if you got the flu coming up or something like that, and you start taking these uh, <clears throat> things for a cold, and it's not the way it's supposed to be done. According to the new CDC report, more than 2.8 million superbugs are in the United States. Now how they count all these things. 
uh, with more than 35,000 people dying from, from them every single year. The problem of antibiotic, uh, antibiotic resistance is worse than we previously thought. He says, and that, pra uh, that practically means that millions of people in the U.S. who are affected by tens of thousands die every single year. Uh, this uh, amounts to the U.S. on the average getting antibiotic resistance infection every 11 seconds uh, and everybody dying or somebody dying every 15 minutes, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> These germs spread between people whether they are, they are displayed as a symptom of an infection or not. There are several ways these germs can uh, <clears throat> spread, and they have a little diagram here, how it gets into your body. Germs develop new cell processes that avoid using the antibiotics target. Germs can change or destroy the antibiotics with enzymes, and, which are proteins that break down the drugs. Uh, germs also resist access or restrict access by changing the entryways or limiting the number of entryways. Uh, germs can get rid of antibiotics using pumps, and germs can change the antibiotics targets so the drug no longer can do the job. They said the problem's not going away, it's potentially a problem that will be with us forever. Well, that's nice. And also note, though, that it's not a hopeless situation because we highlight in this report that prevention is possible. We've seen some progress in certain parts, especially in the prevention of resistant infections in, in hospitals. And uh, what are those? The two main ways to combat antibiotic resistance is the first is to, that antibiotics should be used properly. And properly really means that when you get a prescription for antibiotics, you use it until the prescription is gone. You don't just stop in the middle because you're feeling better. That's a no-no because the, dr the drugs are dampening the effect that the germs are having. And you want to keep that dampening on until they die, if possible, or most of them die. Uh, this means that following your doctor's advice uh, on when to start and when to stop them. It's not, uh, it's not demanding an antibiotic when you really don't need one. Uh, another thing like practicing good hygiene, include hand washing, getting vaccinated, they mentioned here, of course, uh, safe sex practices uh, if you're sexually active, preparing and following safe food handling, like cooking your meat thoroughly, prevent uh, spread of germs and resist, uh, resistors. Uh, superbugs like this don't have, uh, just don't have health consequences. They have also economic effects, depending on the type of the pathogen. Yeah, probably if you're going to the hospital, it's going to cost you big bucks. These uh, other drugs that they're going to use on you are expensive. Being in ICU is very expensive. Being rushed to the hospital is being expensive. If you get helicoptered out, that's even more expensive. So all this really costs money. So if you want to save your money, start getting healthy. Start getting healthy by eating right and following the program and what we're doing here. It says here, for example, um, the drug or the um, germ that causes pneumonia and ureteric tract infection costs an estimated $281 million in 2017 in healthcare costs. Its threat level is considered urgent by CDC standards. Hmm. It's not just the cost. It really does under, undermine a lot of the other things. Example of that is effective antibiotics are really uh, what we rely upon when we're treating patients. To treat a cancer patient with chemotherapy, we need to make sure that we can treat the infection, blah, blah, blah. So really important, folks, to get those uh, things right. Anyway, we'll be right back. Stick around and pick up some primal edge during the break. <clears throat> you know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And welcome back. Uh, I'd like to remind you, please pick up our uh, House Signals newsletter. You know, it's only five dollars for each issue, ten dollars a month. Get you these on the first and the fifteenth of every month. So stay informed, follow the show, and uh, we'll bring you all the news we can. Also, of course, our Primal Edge, our One Shot Wonder. If you want to remain healthy, it's really important to be healthy these days. This is the one thing that can get you there. This can help you as long as your diet is good. I mean, the, it always starts with the diet first, but you do need supplementation in this world because most of our food has lacked a lot of the nutrients that we used to have when uh, we were getting it from the wild. So domestication really downplays the uh, character of, uh, you know, the enzymes and everything that's going on in the food, and it diminishes them. So start getting on the primal edge uh, and uh, start following the show, please. Now, I want to bring something else up. In this chat room, John was saying modern-day slavery, Amazon, uh, $11 billion in profits for 2018, zero in taxes, and uh, it's cutting health insurance for the Whole Foods workers. This is uh, typical that uh, happens in uh, this country and maybe other countries, too. Uh, the profits are so massive, and there's much, much more important. These people need this massive amount of money, and they need to take it away from us. Now, uh, these companies hold a lot of our information, and this is what this next article, Legal Health and Data Harvesting, is all about in the Atlantic. And uh, the, dig the basic digital reference book uh, to a multi-billion dollar player in the healthcare industry is uh, Google, with the potential to combine medical and search data in a myriad of alarming new ways. Earlier this month, it announced it's $2.1 billion acquisition of the wearables company's Fitbit and suddenly company that has logged all of our late night searches about prescriptions and symptoms would potentially have access to our heart rates and our step counts. Yeah, this is a problem. So if they're getting into the health business and uh, there's rumors that uh, Amazon even might be getting into a more drug-related thing, maybe even prescriptions later on, uh, and they've got all this data from us, of course, say Facebook is right in there, Twitter not so much maybe, but uh, I think this becomes a problem, and I've stayed off of uh, Facebook as much as I can. Uh, I, I, I do post on there once in a while. Of course, I post the show on there, so, and that's really the reason I'm on there. 
But it's basically ego-driven, I find there. If I'm posting something, I want to find out if somebody saw it and if somebody's commenting on it. So it's all ego-driven. It's not really good for us. It takes us out of the limelight. And when they start getting into uh, purchasing and buying things or we get into purchasing and buying things from these companies, they're going to be influencing our buying by targeting what they think we like. And I think this is a problem. There's a lot of non things that we need. There's a lot of things we need that we have to buy, but there's a lot of things that we don't need that we buy a lot. And, uh, you know, I can go down a list if you want, but I'm pretty sure you've got your own list. So the Fitbit acquisition seems uh, gone compared to the news of Google's latest endeavor. The Wall Street Journal reported Monday that Google has secretly harvested tens of millions of medical records, patient names, lab results, diagnosis, hospital records, and prescriptions from more than 2,600 hospitals as part of a machine learning project codenamed Nightingale. Citing internal documents, the journal reported that Google, in partnership with Ascension, a health healthcare provider, operating in more than 20 states, was planning to build a search tool for medical professions that would employ machine learning algorithms to process data and make suggestions about prescriptions, diagnosis, and even which doctors to assign to or remove from a patient's team. Neither uh, affected patients nor Ascension doctors had been made aware of the project, the journal reported. And again, all parties asserted that the HIPAA the package of privacy regulations protecting patient data allows for its existence. In response to my request for both Google and Ascension, reference their respective uh, blog saying, all of Google's work with Ascension adheres to industry-wide regulations, including HIPAA, <clears throat> uh, regarding patient data and comes with strict guidance on data privacy, security, and usage. The Department of Health and Humane Services is probing the legality of the deal. Under Google's interpretation, the company is merely a business associate helping Ascension better render its services and thus warrants a different level of scrutiny uh, than a rather actual health care provider. I don't know. I, I see this as a conflict for me. It's a widely agreed upon that HIPAA is out of date. Uh, there's efforts right now to update it for the 21st century, they say. Um, what else is in here? Uh, digital behavior is already used to, uh, to determine all kinds of real-world outcomes. Google and Facebook can infer your emotional state and predict your chance of depression based on your behavior. Children's YouTube videos were used in scientific research about using artificial intelligence to diagnose autism. Insurance companies use social media posts to determine premiums. For years, lending institutions have been doing the same to evaluate creditworthiness. It's legal, folks. This is what they're doing. Google says it doesn't combine its user data with Ascension patient data. But the fact remains that the data is already in the user's hands. It's already tremendously revealing. Your IP address contains information about where you live, which in turn is associated with your social determinations of health, such as income employment status and race so they know how much you make you know they know your race they know your sex they know what you've had in the past they know what drugs you're taking what vitamins you're taking what food you're taking probably they know where you're going they know who you hang out with and now they're going to target you based on that information a recent remor uh, report from the Financial Times done in collaboration with the Carnegie Mellon University notes that Google, like Amazon and Microsoft, collects data entered into popular health and diagnosis, diagnosis sites. Google's ad service, DoubleClick, receives prescription names from drug <coughs> drugs.com, for example, while WebMD's symptom checkers share information with Facebook. The data is not uh, immunized, and legal experts say uh, that, that were interviewed argued that the collection may violate European uh, privacy. So in Europe, they're having this too. Creating tailored medical treatments for countless patients at a scale requires an enormous amount of data and needs to be standardized, tested for accuracy and biases, stored securely, securely processed rapidly. <coughs> I don't have... I don't want any company having this data on me. I think the data should be with me. And then on a 
maybe a thumb drive or something that I can give it to the hospital or to the doctor, and I keep that information. They can't copy that information unless I want them to for some specific reason. I think we owe it to ourselves to have the responsibility, have that data ourselves in a file someplace, in a safe someplace, and use it when we need it, not to be interdispersed with everybody else's. It just doesn't make sense to me. This is a huge problem. Uh, just, it's bad enough to know your social stuff, and then what's happening on Facebook is with the political stuff. It's just, I mean, you get hammered when you go on there. I don't know what you think about this, but uh, let's go on. We'll be right back. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of performance training since 1998 Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically as a certified personal trainer Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions the performance training studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And welcome back. I'm going to the chat room again. Uh, University of Florida professor gave uh, pro real meal interests an interesting talking point with the observation that the ingredients in the two leading plant-based meatless burgers are almost identical to those in dog food. The brands in uh, Possible Burger and Beyond Meat both contain over 20 highly processed ingredients commonly used in pet foods. Flavors and colorings are the only ingredients used in vegetable-based uh, burgers that are not dog food. And he says, keep up the rant. Yeah, I'm ranting today, that's for sure. Yeah, those impossible burgers, uh, 
I'd never even try one. And I remember back in the 80s, they had those Boca burgers. And this is not food. This is not real food. These are fallback foods. I've talked about that before. When our primary food is not here, we go to fallback foods. And that's how agriculture really started. And I've delved back into these things quite a bit. I always read about our ancient ancestors and what they were doing, what they were eating specifically, and when it turned bad, what they did they, they turned to. And if we look at our food today, most of the stuff that we're eating that's advertised is all those fallback foods. And fallback foods, just look it up in the dictionary. The fallback foods are less nutrition. They don't have the same ingredients, but they're easy to keep on the shelf, and that's the reason. Same reason that uh, Google and Facebook and they're making these millions of dollars and cutting back benefits on people. That's the reason they're doing it. More money. They know problems are coming. They need more money so they can hide from us later on. That's, at least that's my take on it. Okay, I want to go to the next article. I want to stay uh, young longer. Of course, that's what we're always talking about. Science says this exercise makes your body act like it's nine years uh, younger. So it's been a dream of civilization since the dawn of time. If you can't live forever, can we at least slow down the aging process? New researchers at Brigham Young University say they found a certain type of physical activity that can actually show the age, slow the aging process in our cells. That ultimately means better health and better physical conditioning that matches our natural age progression of a significantly younger people. And they're saying may, maybe nine years or more. Of course, what we're talking about is walking, walking for 30, 40 minutes, or maybe even running. Uh, I think if you're walking every day, you fall right into this. This is what my parents did. I often talk about that uh, evening walk that they took at 4 o'clock on the beach. And they loved that because when they got to South Florida, they had the beach that they had in Holland, too. So that was really important to them, and that really instilled it in their minds. And I think you need something like that. You need a little bit of rituals. You know, us human beings are really big with rituals, and the reason is because they stick in our minds, and they're endearing to us, and they make us do things that maybe normally we wouldn't do. So the researchers on there, this is where it gets interesting. By pouring through the data in the CDC study, uh, Tucker claims that he was able to correlate people's relative telomere length with the various lengths of uh, levels of physical activity, and he found a surprise. He's found that people uh, had three categories had uh, in three categories have roughly similar ten hour lengths. Those uh, those activities really are the higher level of physical activity. Either you're walking every day, or you're running three days a week, or even better yet, if you don't want to do that thirty minute run or that hour walk, go for five minutes on high intense exercise often talk about this high intensity. This is something that's been proven to uh, uh, get that gene that we call the longevity gene that we're taking these uh, vitamins for. The physical activity does the same darn thing, and this is why physical activity has always improved people's health no matter what you're doing. Okay, so high intensity means that you're going to do something for a minute and maybe take 15 seconds off, do it for another minute, 15 seconds off, and you do that 8, 10, 15 times, whatever time you want. I do this on a tramp, a little one of those little mini tramps, minute on, 15 seconds off. That's not where I started. I started with 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And then slowly you build up, and this is how I build up my clients. So if you're doing, you know, it's 10 minutes of high-intensity exercise with the 15-second breaks in between with a little warm-up and a little cool-down. Easy to fit in because it takes a little over 20 minutes. But going for that hour walk, clears your mind, clears your head. But they've really pretty much proven that these types of activities is what's essential to extending your life. And here they're saying nine years. That's quite a stretch here. I have another uh, article here. Put this one away. Uh, working so hard that you never exercise. And this is, I think, the problem with a lot of us that uh, yeah, right here. And this is comes from Inc. Incorporated. Working so hard that you never exercise. A massive new study of 232,149 people say. This small change reduces your risk of death by 27%. So 27%, if you live 80 years, here we're talking, uh, you know, around that 9 or 10 year mark, which is pretty cool. And this was just once a week. 
Okay, so if you're working so hard trying to build a company, an idea that you're neglecting your health is always going to be right below the surface. That's why I enhearten to learn about this study that suggests that people go for a run just once a week and reduce their uh, death by uh, any cause as much as 27%. Huge uh, amount of people in this. Increased rates of participation in running, regardless of its dose, would probably do substantial improvements in population health and longevity. Any amount of running, even just once a week, is better than not running. This is interesting. He says if you only run once a week and you stop, that's not none. You go from one to none, so one is very important. That's why I always say, you know, if you're going to walk, plan to do it every day. If you miss one, no big deal. Same with running. If you're going to run three times a week and you miss one, you still got two in. And if you just schedule it once a week, it may be harder if you miss it to get it back in. So that's an important thing. A more recent study was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. The positive thing I find is simply that once a week isn't that much to ask. I think this holds some people back. It certainly has for me. Uh, he says, I mean, a two or three mile run once a week isn't going to do much to keep me in shape or help me lose weight. It's not going to improve my speed very much, but that's okay. That's not the goal. Instead, the idea is to simply engage in this uh, medium of fitness effort, no matter how busy you are, to seem as a reasonable one and it's an objective you can meet. Work a little bit, live a little bit longer. So I think this is a... Uh, a good thing. Exercise for me has been uh, pretty much installed in my brain and uh, you know there's just so much that you can do just laying around and everybody likes to lay around a little while but sooner or later it always gets me. I, I don't want to miss jujitsu. I don't want to miss uh, you know doing the stretching that I do or a little yoga that I do or do those dunks. You know all these things what we're talking about is meant to make us healthier, extend our life, and extend our life in a good way. In other words, we're not going to be crippled. We're not going to be sick for, the, sick for the last 10 or 20 years of our life. We're not going to be hospitalized. We're not going to be dependent on other people. We're going to be ourselves, and we're going to take care of ourselves, even if we're alone. But hopefully you have a companion. It's a very important thing, I think. Uh, being alone is not as much fun, I don't think. I mean, I tend to do a lot more crazier things if my wife's not around, I, I might sneak a cookie or do some crazy thing like that. Or, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like the stability of having a mate, it just makes life really good. At least it does for me. I'll be right back, folks. Stick around. i got a lot more. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, hey, welcome back. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Wi-Fi. There's this new report out, and uh, this was comes from Science Direct. And a lot of studies in this, Wi-Fi uh, is a wireless network using at least one Wi-Fi antenna connected to the Internet and a series of computers, laptops, and or wireless devices uh, communicating wireless, wirelessly with the Wi-Fi antenna. In this way, each such wireless communication device can communicate wirelessly with the Internet. All the studies reviewed here use Wi-Fi, the 2.4 gigahertz band, although there is also a 5 gigabit reserved for possible Wi-Fi use in the future. Of course, this is what we're all waiting for, the big 5Y, uh, 5G reveal with all of its little problems. So telecommunications industry linked individuals and groups have claimed that there is no and cannot possibly be any health impacts of Wi-Fi. However, with Wi-Fi exposures becoming more and more common, with many of our exposures being without our consent, there is much concern about possible Wi-Fi health effects. This paper is not focused on the uh, anecdotal uh, reports, but rather 23 controlled scientific studies of health-related effects on animals, cells, including human cells in cultures and in human beings. So they have 23 of these stats. So each of these effects reported in uh, uh, were from 2 and 11 studies, have an extensive literature for their uh, occurrence in uh, response to various non-thermal microwave frequencies. They include the findings that Wi-Fi exposures produce impacts on the testes leading to lower male fertility, oxidative stress, adiposis. Uh, this is a process that has important casual role in neurodegenerative diseases. Do we see any of that happening? Cellular DNA damage, also a process causing cancer and germline mutations, and neuropsychiatric changes, including EEG changes and hormonal changes. So this is quite extensive. I can't go into the whole thing, but I'm going to put it in the newsletter. But... Uh, they did find changes in the uh, testicular uh, uh, mice in, the, in their testes. They found lots of dis different hormonal changes. Uh, 146 uh, review published uh, by Gordon in the studies of historical changes in rodents, the three most sensitive organs in the bottle, body to non-thermal microwave EMFs were the nervous system, the heart, and the testes. <laughs> My goodness. And this is just the 2.4, so we haven't really touched at the 5G. And, of course, there's a lot of things happening with the 5G. It's really one step lower than your microwave oven. So if you're like me, who threw their microwave oven out about 8 or 10 years ago, then this is, this is going to be a concern. And also, you know, we're talking not just about our phones and our TVs now, of course, 
uh, and some of our beds are hooked up to it. Uh, we've all got maybe your refrigerators hooked up to it. But, you know, as soon as they start tagging the products, and uh, you can tag your own products, you can go to Apple and buy a few of those tags, and you'll never lose your keys and everything like that. But, you know, we can still use our brains uh, still, you know. So with all these tags, now everything that you buy is going to have a tag on it. When you purchase it, uh, they're going to have a tag on where you live. Uh, you know, that's going to be known because you're taking it home. You're, they're going to see how long you've used it, how far you go through it. Probably you're going to get an indication when it gets low that maybe something on Facebook or Twitter or something is going to pop up and say, hey, I think you're running low on this, you know, that type of thing. Uh, it may be tied to the health we were talking about before. So if the same company is pushing a product, has your information, and now they're going to make suggestions to you. They may just make real small suggestions. Who knows what they're doing? They may be flashing things that we can't even see. I don't really know, but it's just, uh, you know, it's just a problem. So each of these seven Wi-Fi effects found in the 211 studies also have been found to be caused by other Wi-Fi frequency EMFs in a much larger literature. From 10 to 16 reviews extens uh, extensively document each of the seven effects as general microwave frequency effects. Uh, these are therefore general effects produced by the EMFs. Each of the seven reported found Wi-Fi effects should therefore be considered established Wi-Fi effects. So they're saying because uh, of the findings, this is established now that this is happening because of the Wi-Fi and nothing else. The author is not made aware of any genuine Wi-Fi studies on these seven effects that report no statistical significance evidence of effect. So there's never been a study that shows none. It's always showing something, just to tell you something. Each of these sevens is very serious. Oxidative stress has casual roles in the most chronic human diseases. Cellular DNA damage can cause cancer, thus producing a partial explanation of the EMF cancer causation. Because such DNA damage occurs in sperm cells, such damage is highly likely to produce mutations in the impact future generations. Calcium overload is highly likely to be the cause of each of these other various effects, as discussed below. And uh, a recent meta-analysis study shows lowering sperm counts and sperm quality in many countries around the world, which declines of over 50% of all advanced technology countries. So over 50% of these uh, countries have problems with low sperm counts, and then, of course, we're having problems with women conceiving because of that, I presume. The senior author of this study suggested that this effect alone may lead to human extinction. Extinction, wow. They said it right there. Given the major impact of EMF exposures on sperm count and quality in human and animal studies, the pattern of evidence on male for Tillaby uh, is very worrying. He says one thing needs to be clarified here. However, the two studies on calcium overload following Wi-Fi exposure, such as overload, was measured but with a substantial time period following the exposure. Overload was shown to be caused to the significant effect by the increase in the reception uh, receptor activities. That's the TRPV1 receptor known to be activated by oxidative stress. It is my view, discussed in the detail below, there is a central mechanism that acts to produce excessive intercellular calcium immediately following EMF exposure, that the oxidative stress and the activation is secondary. So, lots of things happening. Uh, they're pushing this, and they're going to be pushing this out, and I don't know if you really have a choice. Uh, with these smart meters, with all these things, the smart cars coming, driving themselves, you're going to be tuned into that Internet uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it seems like. So maybe we should uh, designate a, uh, a holiday of some kind where you just do away with all electronics and you just go into a room by yourself or maybe out in the woods would be the thing to do. I, I'm thinking you go out for that whole day and you don't get exposure, you don't take anything with you except maybe an emergency signal of some kind. But uh, it becomes more and more important to start taking some of these things that Paige and I often talk about, like the primal edge, uh, like taking saunas, like doing the exercise, like taking the MNN and the, you know, the precursor for uh, NAD+. Plus. 
Uh, it's, it seems like these are the only things that are going to help you because uh, you can kind of feel it. I mean, when you start taking the Primal Edge for a little while, you can feel the difference. You take the M&M, after a while you feel it. The placebos have those effects too, so maybe we're getting both sides of that. But I think it's important to remain healthy. So stick around. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the solar minimum. Uh, during regular solar cycles, approximately every, every 11 years, the sun's magnetic field flips. As the sun's magnetic field flips from one pole to the other, there are fewer sunspots. Fewer spots reduce the activity on the uh, sun's surface, thus lowering the solar energy emitted by the sun. The low point is called solar minimum, which we are currently experiencing. Uh, a grand solar minimum occurs when several solar cycles ex exhibit less than average activity for decades. Solar cycles still occur during these grand solar minimum periods, but at a lower intensity. Past grand solar minimums are correlated with the extreme cold and regional climate variabilities. Now, uh, there's an author, Brian Fagan, who uh, had uh, this book, The Little Ice Age, How Climate Made History in the 13th, 1850s. He says, there was never a monolithic deep freeze, rather a climatic seesaw that swung constantly backwards and forwards in volatile and sometimes disastrous shifts. 
There were, ar there were Arctic winters, blazing summers, serious droughts, torrential rain years, often bountiful harvest and long periods of mild winters and warm summers. Cycles of excessive cold and unusual rainfall uh, fall could last a decade, a few years, or maybe just a single season. The pendulum of climate change rarely paused for more than a generation. According to solar scientists, we have entered our next grand solar minimum and experienced all the climate chaos of past grand minimums have brought to the Earth. The past climate chaos has captured in the Arctic and Antarctic ice cores, uh, cave stagmites and stag sites and lake and uh, ocean sediment cores. Given the history of the past grand minimums, we can expect higher than average wind events like we're experiencing in California. Flooding, grains, soybean fields like in the Midwest is experiencing this spring. More rapid temperature changes like Denver had in October when the temperature dropped from 83 degrees to 13 degrees the next day. More early snow damage in Canada and the U.S. grain on the gray, uh, U.S. grain crops. Early storms destroying up to 40 percent of this year's harvest. California's new normal is going to be extreme weather, floods, droughts, and unfortunately de devastating fires as the next grand solar deepens. Thanks for sticking around, folks. That's it. I'll see you next week, and Paige will be back. Bye bye.